Dave Lander with DaveLander.com here. This is your podcast for Friday, October 23rd, 2015. Listen to this and ignore that. Random thoughts. A few days ago, a client asked an interesting question. Dave, if there is no trend and we are trend-following morons, why are we trading and losing money? Robert, putting capital into harm's way. First, we get paid to take risk. Risk being the key word in that sentence. Obviously, every trade doesn't always work. If it did, you'd never see my fat ass again. Second, we've only had three trades over the last three months in the model portfolio. So I wouldn't consider a trade a month on average trading yourself into a hole. Third, yep, one of those stopped out at a bona fide loss. The other two are still open. Both were in the minus column recently, but one went back into black just yesterday. I like to see the open positions as having potential as long as they don't stop out. I used to micromanage myself out of trades at the first signs of adversity and then often watch and anguish as they took off without me. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Also, keep in mind that one good trade will cover a multitude of cents. Sometimes you just have to be patient and wait, either for new or with existing positions. So far in 2015, conditions have been less than ideal for the trend follower. There really hasn't been an overall trend. In fact, based on yesterday's close, the P's are almost exactly where they were the last time we sang Old Lang Syne. Ideally, as I preach, you want the stock, the sector, stocks within the sector, and the overall market to be headed in the same direction as a potential trade. And obviously, that really hasn't happened in 2015. Yet, we did see quite a few decent winners in spite of the market. The entry points for these trades are plotted on the chart below. See DaveLander.com. Yes, there were a few sneakers too, but the point is that without these winners, 2015 so far would have been a bust. So why do we take the trades? We took them because the database produced them, and I really liked it. If a setup knocks your socks off, then take it. If not, pass. It usually pays to listen to the database. Do frame it within the overall context of the sector and the market. Most stocks seem to have caught up with the overall trendless market in more recent times. This is why we have backed off and sat on our hands a bit. We are seeing a few new setups once again, read further, but entries so far have kept us out. SSDD. Marcy, my smoking hot wife, occasionally takes a peek at my column to see what I'm up to over here. When asked what she thinks, she often says that I say a lot of the same stuff. You're right, babe, I do. And my job is to keep doing that until everyone gets it. Judging from the amount of phone calls and emails I receive looking to factor in the news, trade for action and not to make money, pick mediocre stocks, bottoms, tops, micromanage, and so forth, it looks like I'll have this job for a long time. The aforementioned client went on to say, It seems that the methodology could be enhanced at times, i.e. when you're trying to catch new trends and, you're n and you were not simply a trend-following moron by considering additional information. Like, for example, if China continues to decline, there's no way that metals slash commodities slash mining stocks can begin to establish a solid new trend. The concept of ignoring all information other than price in all circumstances does not sit well with me. Well, let's look at some of the 2015 news events and how the market reacted. In 2015, we had Russia attacks, a civil war in Syria, Greece bailout, or, or not, I forget, Ebola, the Fed, China, Windows 10 was announced, a new iPhone, well, that's every two weeks. We had uh, three earnings periods. We had Iran nuclear deal, Nepal earthquake. Liquid was found on Mars, and, and Matt Damon was left on Mars. Look into the P's. That's the S&P 500. See if you could pick these events out. I bet you can't. No, the idea of picking out news events on a chart was stolen from Greg Morris. He asked me to stop mentioning his name in columns where I use the word moron. So, I won't. Trying to interject logic into markets by factoring news is an exercise in futility. As Marion McClellan once said, people buy and sell stocks for a variety of reasons. Some people buy stocks when they have money. Some people sell stocks when they need money. And others use far more sophisticated methods. What about the situation in Nigeria? I told the story ad nauseum, but I'll tell it again just in case we have a new podcast listener out there. Once, at a seminar, I was showing short side setups in the energies. Someone blurted out, in a, voice, in a voice that could best be described as a pissed-off Henry Kissinger, What about the situation in Nigeria? Well, what about the situation in Nigeria? Energy stocks dropped nicely in spite of the situation in Nigeria. Some great trades would have been missed by trying to confuse the issue with facts. 
So don't confuse the issue with facts. And if you ever do, go to www.don'tconfusetheissuewithfacts.com. So news is always noise. Wait, Big Dave, you're saying that markets are never moved on news? Of course markets are jerked around by news. However, when looking at any piece of information, you have to ask yourself, is it tradable? And if it's not, toss it out. Also, it's not the news that you know that usually matters. It's the out of the blue stuff that blindsides you. To the markets. The peas have fought back nicely over the past few weeks, tacking on nearly 9%. Futures are strong pre-market, so it looks like we'll see some follow-through, at least on the open. So is this the all clear? I don't think so. The market now has its work cut out for it. The action puts the S&Ps right at overhead supply. Sure, it could cut right through it like butter, and I hope it does. Likely, though, it will be met with some resistance at those, as those who rode the market down during the last spill will be tempted to get out of break-even. Ditto for the quack. NASDAQ. Shorter term, the Rusty appears to have put in a bottom. Unfortunately, again... I think you have to see the forest for the trees here. So far, it still appears to have formed a top, which began way back in 2013. You know the routine, though. Take things one day at a time. So far, the latest rally has been mostly led by stocks that are defensive in nature. Food, tobacco, and consumer non-durables. These issues are so-called defensive because people still smoke, eat, drink, and, well, you know, and bear markets. I actually don't see the flight to safety as a positive development. Again, though... I take things one day at a time. If the industry start banging out new highs, then I'll be forced to be bullish. Don't think too much. Just follow along. On the downside, it looks like it was health services turning the barrel yesterday. We are short MOH. They got clipped for over 3%. I know it's just one sector, but the fact that areas are still getting torpedoed is concerning. I still think commodity-related areas such as energies, metals, and mining have potential. Unfortunately, they have been consolidating as of late, digesting their recent gains. Hopefully, did I just say hope? The bottom here will go back to being more of an event than a process. I covered all this and then some in yesterday's Dave Landry's The Week in Charts. Check it out. So what do we do? Remain patient while the market finds its way. I'm having a hard time believing that we could build a bull market on defensive issues alone, but I suppose stranger things have happened. Maybe other sectors will join into the fray. As far as setups, continue to watch the aforementioned commodities. Make sure that you wait for entries just in case the bottoming remains a process. And listen to the database and ignore the news. Best of luck with your trading today, Dave. P.S. Got a question on any of this? Shoot me an email at dave at davelander.com. Thank you.